Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. So today's video, I'm going to go back to our watercoloring roots and pull out this princess, Primo Princess, it's Audrey. And we're going to start by inking her up with the, um, oh my lord, just that quick, that ink pad went out of my head. The Archival Ink from Ranger. This is a good ink if you want to do uh, watercolor because it's archival and it won't run when you're using your uh, watercolor uh, medium. So you can either just use this or if you want, you could even use the Versafine black ink, which is a super, it's actually my favorite black ink to use um, for stamping. You can use that. But for this one, we're going to use the archival. And so, once I stamped her, I wound up doing it three times because I just wanted to make sure all my lines were nice and crisp. I'm grabbing this Daniel Smith. It's extra fine watercolor. And it's a nice palette, actually. It has the uh, Prima Tech colors. Um, some luminescent colors and quinacridones and more so you get a little bit of, a little taste of all the different watercolors that he makes and uh, all I'm doing here is just taking my water brush and dragging some of the watercolor out from um, the little test dots that they've put on here because that's how you reactivate it you reactivate it with water and you're able to watercolor and do you know whatever projects you're working on and you're not coming out of pocket a large amount of money because you're not buying the full tube so this is definitely an option if you wanted to branch out and try watercoloring and it's a new medium for you um there's so many different grades just like with like acrylic paint and really any medium you take uh color pencils, watercolor pencils, markers, you know, they have all different levels. You have the ones where it may not be the greatest of uh, quality, but you're going to at least be able to color. <laughs> and then you have a step up where it's going to be more what I guess they would call a student grade. So it's good, but it's not the professional grade. Daniel Smith is like a professional grade watercolor. Okay. It's very expensive. Everybody who does watercoloring loves his watercolors, okay? Um, I personally, I love anything that I get the color with. It's very relaxing, and I find it very calming. Um, so, do I have to get Daniel Smith? Probably not. Um, I get the same satisfaction actually using my Zig markers, but it's still nice to be able to try the different mediums, so... I highly suggest this. Um, I couldn't find a skin tone for her that I liked on the color swatches. So I pulled out the Zig Real Color Real Brush markers, the flesh tone, and I grabbed out the pale pink. And I'm going to use those two to create her skin tone. And the pale pink I use kind of as a shadow because that pink on top of this flesh color almost turns to like a brownish color. It's hard to see um, here on the video, but like in real life, it's it was really dark and I was trying not to go too, too crazy, but I wanted to just give a little bit of definition when you look at it. And I'm just going wherever, like where the plants are hanging over her hand. I wanted to put some, the inside of her arm. Um, I will say, make sure, uh, depending on the quality of the watercolor paper you get, just be careful you don't use too much water. I think while I was working on this, I wound up using too much water at times. And I got that um, where the paper feels like it's peeling. So just be careful. So really, all you do is wet your brush. You're going to dab the dots, whatever color that you want to use, and put it down. Keeping in mind that you can either put it straight to dry paper, or you can wet the area where you want the watercolor to go in and um, attach the water to the place that's already wet. And in certain instances, it will kind of wick out the color. It's very fun to try. 
So on the flowers, I wound up using the Rose Matter, um, and it has sort of like a pinkish red to it. And then for the leaves, I wound up using Serpentine Genuine, which is, uh, I like mossy colors for my greens, the um, olives, stuff like that. Um, I know there's so many different kinds of greens, like your uh, forest greens and stuff like that, but I tend to gravitate more towards the olive side when it comes to green. So what I'm doing here is I quickly opened, I have like a mister on my table of just plain water. And sometimes if I don't have enough uh, water in the barrel and I feel like I'm not getting a good squeeze, I will open it up so that way it allows me to get, you know, a little bit more water instantly, like using it like a regular brush. And then that's all you do. You just grab um, for the roses in her hair. I wound up using the quinacridone red because it was the only one to me that seemed like a, a true pure red. So I grabbed that. And then we're just using that same olive green, the uh, serpentine genuine green. And I'm hitting it up, putting some of it on the bird, and then trying to hit all the leaves that are in her hair. And what's funny is, by the time I actually start working on the hair color, which I'm starting right here, um, as I'm going, I find leaves in her hair. And I actually wind up putting some of the hair color over it. But the best part with um, watercolors is... You know, I had a little bit of color down, I went to something else, let it dry a little bit, put some more color on top, and you didn't even, you won't know that I had colored over it with a different color. I just tried to leave it in a more saturated tone. And then I'm just adding, um, on this one I did quinacridone gold. So it's like a brownish gold color for her hair. And what I did was, in certain areas, I put a lot of the color, and then I would um, kind of drag it out and let it lighten. And then right here, I'm actually putting a little bit of this bronzonite. Um, it has a little bit of a, like a bronzy glitter to it. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit. And then for her dress, I decided to use Imperial Purple. I thought it was really pretty. And then in between where the uh, stems of the flowers are, I'm just going to add a little bit of the purple to continue the background. And then here, I'm just going to grab different colors to put into the uh, body and the wings of the bird. And um, that's super simple. Just trying to grab colors. Certain ones, they're kind of lighter. So I do start, you know, adding some of my more... Uh, I don't want to say solid color, but colors that I've used in doing her hair, the flowers, and stuff like that, that I know once I wet it up, it's going to be a little bit darker. And this whole time I'm filling this out, I'm thinking, you know what, okay, I can leave it like this. I'm okay. I'm happy with it. But of course, by the time you see the finished product, um, I do wind up putting some of the blue behind and around her. And then I'm just using my stamp on my jig to put my sentiment in the center. And then I had a little bit of a smudge, and I used the uh, Tombow, Tombow Sand Eraser. And then that's the finished product there. Um, on the card itself, you can see, like I said, I went around with the blue. And the sentiment that I used had this flower stamp that came with it. Um, I did make this a sympathy card. I have to... A friend I want to give it to you and so I stamped the same flower on the inside with the sentiment and then on the outside of the envelope so it completes the project and it ties it all together and I think it makes it you know a very elegant and finished project I love these 
let me tell you, if you have a chance to get the Prima Princesses, you may not use them all the time, but when it comes to, like, certain things, like, I love the bird coming down to her, it just, it's something about it that speaks peace to me, and it was the perfect thing to use, I think, for a sympathy card, even though you wouldn't, you might not always think that way, but it does work, I don't know why. So, thank you guys for joining me. I know it's a little bit of a throwback to when we're doing some of the color videos, but it's just sometimes it's good to take a step back and just go back and enjoy some of the original stuff. So, at the very end here, I'm going to have links to previous videos. Make sure if you're not already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. And I hope you guys have a great day.